We're sending scientific instruments into space to explore areas that we can't send humans to easily. We've got cameras that are off looking at the sun. We've got probes that are going to other planets such as Mars, and also satellites that look at what we're doing here on Earth. All of this is so we can understand better how our world fits in within the universe. It might seem a bit odd that we're spending all of this time and money putting something into space when we can see the sun from here on Earth. But by having a satellite that's sat out in orbit, we can see things in a lot more detail, and that gives scientists a much better understanding. So for example, we can observe the sun in lots of different wavelengths. And this really helps us understand how the sun influences us here on Earth. So satellites can be quite complicated systems, and they're put together by different teams of people, and all of those different people have different roles. So my job is an electronic engineer. So I'm responsible for designing a lot of the electronic systems that are on the satellites. Initially, designing electronics for space sounds like it could be really complicated. But to be honest, it all comes down to the same sort of basic principles that you've been learning about. So looking at voltages, looking at currents, and using basic components such as resistors and capacitors. One of the challenges of designing electronics for space is that it's quite hard to go back and fix it if something goes wrong. So reliability becomes a really key concern. So a lot of my effort is spent making sure that things work in pretty much all possible scenarios. So for example, we might be looking at the amount of power that's dissipated within a resistor. So using simple basic equations to work out the amount of power that's dissipated and making sure that's within the allowable limit. If one component was to fail in some way and it was to break the entire satellite, then that really wouldn't be acceptable. So a lot of my work focuses on finding these single point failures as they're known and working out the best way to get rid of them. Building the system that's going to go into space can be quite expensive. So what we'll do beforehand is build what's known as engineering models of our systems. These are models that are very similar, but don't quite use the same expensive flight level components that we'll use on the actual final build. This also means that we'll have some spare development models that are available here on Earth that we can do our testing on. So if whilst up in space, something goes wrong with the satellite, then we've got an almost exact replica sat down here on Earth that we can use to figure out what's gone wrong. If you're going to spend a large amount of money sending something into space, you've got to be pretty certain it's going to work when it gets there. So a lot of space engineering concentrates on testing and making sure that things work within the space environment. So for example, we'll put our systems into something known as a thermal vacuum chamber. And what this does is it simulates both the vacuum of space and also the temperatures that the system will experience whilst it's up there. The thermal vacuum chamber that we've got here is able to go down to temperatures as low as 2 Kelvin, so that's just a couple of degrees above absolute zero. It's also able to produce a near-perfect vacuum, so this allows us to test our systems and ensure that they're able to work within the space environment. We also have a vibration table that's able to simulate rocket launches. So the rocket launch is actually one of the most stressful parts that the system will undergo because of the large vibrations that it encounters. So our vibration table allows us to simulate this and ensure that our system will be able to survive. One recent project that I've been involved in has been to put two cameras on the International Space Station that will observe Earth and make the images available for the general public. I graduated from university two years ago, and to be honest, this was the first bit of real electronic design work that I was involved in. And it's quite amazing to think that now I've got a camera that I was heavily involved in, that I've built and I've, I've designed, is now up in space whizzing around Earth every 90 minutes. These cameras launched in November last year, and everyone in the team gathered together to watch the launch live in a lecture theatre here at work. Of course, everyone was a little bit nervous about what would happen, but everything went well and the cameras were well on their way to the International Space Station. Once the cameras had arrived at the International Space Station, they had to be installed on the outside by two cosmonauts. This took place just after Christmas and was broadcast live over the internet. So I sat down with a mince pie and my mum and watched the two cameras that I've been involved with being installed. It was really exciting to watch because you could see obviously the cosmonauts holding onto the cameras. But there wasn't a great amount I could do. Of course, my one concern really was that they had a lens cap on and I was pretty keen that they took that off. 